Very fast. Name to please. Excuse me, Holly, but I just talked to the DA's office, and Ross mm -hmm. is meeting with Chief Ryan at the police station later this afternoon. Yeah. I think we should cover it. Cover it? Why? Well, it's a perfect setting to get his views on law and order. Very good. So who do we have on short notice? I think I could do it. All right. I'll do it. You're busy. Thanks, Blake, but the political desk is my beat. Well, I've covered Ross before. Yes, and it nearly caused a fiasco. All I asked is what he was doing the night of the blackout. What's wrong with that? You just have this way of rubbing him the wrong way. I don't know. Not always. Often enough. Jilly, you handle it. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Any word from Mindy? No. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Look, how do you feel about handling a special assignment? Believe me, right now, the more work, the better. Well, this one might be a little sensitive for you. It concerns your new family, the Spaulings. Well, I'm a reporter first. How do you feel about investigating your mother? You look perfect. Oh, <laughs> I was just... Uh... Preparing yourself for your constituents. Indeed. But uh, one cannot be too perfect or uh, too prepared for the constituents of this fair state. Oh, you've spoken like a true candidate. <sighs> Oh, you caught me. That was a perfectly plastic political platitude, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's the sense of humor I want our viewers to see in this interview. The real Ross Mahler. <laughs> the real Ross Mahler. Well, I think people want their candidates to be uh, thoughtful, not flippant. Say, by the way, uh, is WSPR sending anybody else over to cover this? Well, Blake did volunteer. But she's not coming, is she? After the last press conference, Holly figured you probably had enough of her for a while. Yeah. That's for sure. So, shall we do it? Do it? Oh, the interview. Yes, of course. Ross, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, actually. Why don't we do this interview uh, somewhere over there? All right, I'll go set up. You want to investigate Alexandra? There's something very curious in it. Don't you have any work to do, Blake? I'm all caught up. Well, why don't you take a well-deserved coffee break? Thank you. So, are you interested so far? So, how are you and Ellen Michael getting along? Why do you care so much? I told you. All the long-term solutions to the core problems of crime. Poverty, lack of education. Now, these issues, in my opinion, have not adequately been dealt with by Senator Flynn. Well, it's obvious that you care very much about justice, Mr. Marlin. Oh, yes, I intend to make it a priority, along with education, because uh, nothing less than the future of this nation depends on our citizens being well-educated. And I agree. Well, it sounds like you're going to have a very busy schedule if you go to Washington. If I'm elected senator, my time will be devoted to working for the people of this state. Well, surely not all your time. I mean, even a senator has to have a personal life. Oh, yes. I agree, and I, I imagine I will find time to relax. With anyone special? No, I'm afraid not at the moment. You know, as long as we're here in the police station, I'd like to but talk Mr. about... Mr. Marler, won't you need a hostess to, you know, serve at those dinners that I'm sure you're likely to give in, in Washington? Well, I guess I'll have to hire a caterer or something. Now, about the Citizens Review Board that I wanted to... Mr. Talk. District Attorney, I sense that you're hesitant to talk about your personal life. You're not trying to hide anything, are you? No, no, no. Of course not. Okay. My personal life is an open but dull book because I'm afraid at the moment most of the pages are blank. A handsome, unattached <laughs> bachelor like you? Come on. <laughs> I'm flattered, but do you think this is uh, really relevant to the campaign? Well, it might be to some of your constituents. Well, they can show their support for me in November by voting for me. 